Hey, this is Front Toes of Cichlids and More. Today we're looking at peacock cichlid breeding. We're going to be looking at starburst and some things I've learned about the, the project I've had with this unusual peacock cichlid. We're going to be looking at genetics and just looking at, hey, sometimes more is better, more to choose from. So check out this video and what I'm talking about when I say there, you need to have more to choose from. So stay tuned for this exciting video. So the really cool looking peacock cichlid you see on the bottom of the aquarium there, the white lips, the very amazing orange coloration, that is starburst. Now I've been breeding starburst for a year and a half, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, what my plan was to have starburst mixed with some OB peacock cichlids and have the starburst coloration with some black markings. Now what I've noticed recently is that you can't just take one specimen and think that your project is going to turn out great. Basically what I had was a project and I left this fish in here for this video is the fish you see on the top is what I was what I call the Dragonite Peacock Cichlid and even though only one side uh, has black markings uh, that is an offspring of Starburst, and he's around a year and a half years old. But he is a male, and if you noticed, his coloration is not full uh, in full power, to say. And the reason for this is his genetics is not as good as, say, other genetics. Some peacocks, you can have full coloration at three months. You can have them breeding at three months. And that's really what you want. You want your alpha male to be able to develop quickly the coloration and as well as the breeding as quick as possible. So I'm re going to retire the project where I'm trying to breed the fish you see here with the OBs. The reason being he, did, he is not ready to breed yet and he's probably not got the best genetics for the program. I want other fish, the offspring, that I want to come from him to color up and be looking good like Starburst with black markings very early in their their life. So from three to six months. So what I'm going to do here is I got plenty of OBs in here, a lot of females. That's the best way to have a, a breeding project going. You have one breeding male and multiple breeding females. So I have the oldest, one of the oldest females in this aquarium that is holding, that has bred with Starburst, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those uh, onward in the video. Right now, let me tell you, see, genetics is something that you don't have to, like, be exact on because you never know uh, what's going to come out in the fish because you could have 50 fish and, you know, 30 of them could look different than the other 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 50 that's in the, the brood. So you never know what you're going to get. You can't really trace all the lineages from generations past. You just can't do it. Even in the wild, they mix in the wild and the lakes. So basically what you need to do, let them breed, get them to a certain size. That's what I'm going to do. And look for the markings you want. And then you'll either keep the extra, sell them, or cull them. I've always been hesitant to cull my fish because I think it's kind of cruel but you know hey they get eaten in the wild and plus if I wasn't uh, harvesting or collecting the babies uh, they would be eaten in the aquarium as you know anyway so it's not like uh, I'm doing something that would not happen in nature so I'm gonna have to cull some of these fish to get more fish like I'm wanting. I'm wanting one like Starburst with black markings. Uh, so in this video we're going to be looking at uh, what's coming from this female right there. You see, let me show you my finger right here. This biggest female. That female right there is at least three to four years old and normally has around 50 to 70 babies. She's holding. We're looking at hopefully two weeks. Hopefully they'll be swimming so what we're going to do here in this video 
is I'm going to strip them and I'm going to put them in this aquarium to the right. It's got plenty of hiding spots. And yes, I was going to have a crazy Mabuna cichlid breeding in there. And there actually are at least one or two Mabuna from that project, baby Mabuna, that I'm raising up. Uh, so that project it will be on put on hold besides the babies that are in there But I'm going to be putting the peacock cichlids in there to grow them out pretty fast And then we'll have to get to a point where I'd have to decide which ones to cull So let me take a moment here to show you how I'm going to strip this fish And how they'll do in this aquarium that you're looking at now so what I like to do is I like to put the female in aquarium water. I don't I don't use fresh water. I use aquarium water. There's a little bit of debris in the look at the cat. He won't. He'll, she'll leave him alone. Uh, I use aquarium water. Uh, that way that the temperature is the same as the aquarium. Uh, we won't stress the fish. I have the female completely submerged. And then I get a card uh, that you use at the grocery store to do the stripping. So I'll show you that. Now it doesn't matter to me that the fish, uh, the cats are actually looking at the fish. So what I do, I take one of these uh, discount cards, members cards. There's a lot of different reasons why you may have one in your life. So if you use these to strip, I think they work the best. You can use your finger, but I like using these. So I slowly get the female. And then slowly pull down. Now some of the eggs are not fertilized, but a lot are. It could take up to a couple of minutes for them all to come out. You need to turn the head a little bit up. I have the gills always submerged in the water so the female can breed. She's not out of the water. So there's not as many as I was hoping for. Maybe 20 or so. Maybe 30. There's a lot of unfertilized eggs. So we'll be putting her back in the aquarium right now. And we'll take those wigglers, which you'll see right there. You see them moving around, and we'll put them in a tumbler. I was hoping they'd be free swimming, but they are not. Since the fry are wigglers, they're not fully developed. I'll be using a turkey baster to suck them out. You can get these at all grocery stores. They're usually hanging on the side of the aisle, and they're also in the cooking supplies. I'll be sucking them up, uh, that way you don't damage them uh, when you get them out of there, you put in the tumbler. Now one thing that a lot of people would kind of ignore their first few times of tumbling uh, either eggs or wigglers. You don't want to have a tremendous force. Right now they're kind of wiggling around themselves and there's a little bit of flow. That's perfectly what you want. If they bounce around too much they actually can get damaged and you'll get them killed off. Also, like I was saying, there was some unfertilized eggs in the mouth. Make sure you don't put those in with the tumbler because they will rot and can kill your live fish. So be aware of that. We'll be coming back to this video uh, on this type of uh, topic here in about a week's time when these are free swimming. Hopefully you'll be able to get to see some even though there's a lot of plants. This aquarium, let me show this aquarium real quick. Lots of plants, so it's going to be uh, difficult to see, but you'll be able to see a few of them swimming around. Now, I do not expect that uh, coloration, uh, markings will show up for at least a month or two uh, on any of these fish even the black markings the black markings sometimes take up to two to three months before they'll show up 
it will look like a totally uh, regular dragon blood and then the black markings will show up. I always like to show after show, uh, stripping a fish is how comfortable the female is. She's not stressed out. That's the main female there. The biggest one there next to Starburst. She's doing fine. She's not even breathing heavy. Doing great. It's only been a couple of minutes. So she's doing good. Make sure you keep your females in the water when you're stripping the fish. And then things will do well. You'll be able to have more broods from the fish. They won't die off from stress because it's too much of a stress during this procedure. Could uh, weaken or uh, slow down the breeding process of the fish where they don't breed as much. So just follow these steps or similar steps and you'll be on your way to breeding fish like Starburst here. And maybe we'll have some Dragonite Peacocks after all with this project because I have not given up. More is what we're looking at. We're looking at more of the offspring so we can select the ones I want. Uh, I'm actually going to have to do the culling process because I'm out of room. Uh, many of you are out of room and do not want to let MTS take over because it can be detrimental to your wallet, your health, and psychology if you have too many aquariums. So do what you can with what you got and you'll be happier. All right, thanks again for watching Ricky Kennedy Cichlids. This has been Peacock Cichlid Breeding Starburst.